record button double check make sure that obs is recording and we are all right <clears throat> so when we last gathered the party was hot off the cusps of finishing their long battle with osiris and then once everything was all said and done with that the party by Regis's both request and almost forceful urging pretty much had everyone take a long needed rest with the assistance of one of Zero's rejuvenation chambers. In between the time they were covering, they had a immensely informative meeting with Korra as he explained the true origins of the Devourer being a deity, or a ex-deity by the name of Shinryu who, due to the constant fragmentation of the true dimensions and causing false dimensions to create it, was on the Dimensional Council to do the job of maintaining balance and such but Shinryu decided to take matters into his own hands which the council did not approve of and it wasn't until Shinryu made a deal with the true chaos that led to the birth of the devourer being Shinryu himself an interdimensional consuming dragon whose sole purpose is to erase all of the many different dimensions that become the one true dimension within himself. And it was also during that conversation where the party learned of the inevitable strength that they will encompass and encroach upon during their journey. And they were given a pretty good estimate of where they stood at the current moment in time. And so from there, Henry and Dreva were offered the opportunity to undergo a trial to further enhance their very quickly growing power. And that battle did take place with the proctors of the trial being Ifrida and Mayer. However, the battle had to be cut short due to the fact that the party can only remain in the spiritual astral plane for about seven Palamecian days before irreversible effects begin to take place. And when they return to the physical plane, they were brought up to speed on things they missed during their seven day rest period. And they saw some of the restoration efforts taking place around the city. And they were, their, their prototype gear that had been initially retrieved from Zero was given back to them with very, very nice specialized components tailored to each of their combat abilities. And before our scene ended, it was Garland taking the time to take a look at their newfound garments as they very, very much entreat him as a man who yearns and has a very deep love for battle and from there our story will continue looks good Riku <clears throat> yep hmm <clears throat> These armor systems are really quite flashy. He says is when he's wearing all white now. <laughs> yep, I uh, like I said, with the uh, field data accumulated within all the armors and stuff, I figured why not just go full send and make it as what I'm looking for special as possible 
and I'm normally not the flashy type, but as Cynthia will, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Attest to, yeah, that, anyway, as she can attest to, uh, when I get the, uh, the design juices flowing, stuff like this happens. But, glad to know that you like it. Very glad to know that you like it. Yeah, it's really nice. It's, it feels a lot more comfortable. It's... It's honestly a little odd how comfortable it is, but... Yeah, the, um... Quite fascinating. The gear also uh, recorded your uh, body measurements, so they were made custom to fit as comfortably as possible hmm. and after you say that Garland speaks up you there blonde one just how long have you been making garments of war and as Zero turns to respond he says uh ever since I've been here so like like you know couple years also this is just a lot where I came from does that answer your question armor man and Garland responds do you dabble with spiritual gear as I don't necessarily have a physical form to call my own And Zero responds, nah, I don't really do the whole spirit mystic stuff. That's, that's not, me. she does that. He points to Cynthia, she does that, but nah, not me. But that sword, though, you think you could, uh, you could leave that with me for a couple months? And Garland laughs and says, absolutely not. <laughs> I thought he'll say that. Zero, uh, he snaps his fingers and like, ah, well, I tried. Maybe next time. Speaking. I'll be, I'll be back for uh, it, though. Speaking of, uh, Garland's unique armor and outrageous looking weapon, how is the Falcon armor going along? What have, what have you been doing to it? You know, I'm glad you asked because... And he snaps both of his hands. And right in front of him, some cylinders come straight up out the ground. And within them are enhanced versions of your falcon armor. With... An additional set for Henry if he chooses to use them. Oh, hell yeah. I'm going to take it. And he reaches into his shirt pocket. And he has several different anklets in his hand. And he hands them to you all. I made your armor better. And I made something brand spanking new out of it too. And he he hands you he hands each of you the anklet, and when it touches you, you feel a a an electric pulse. Not anything threatening or whatnot, but you feel something just very slowly wash over you. And before long, the anklet moves on its own and it attaches itself to your right or left anklet ankle doesn't matter which one it's your choice but when you notice it you then feel almost like you're on the cusp of taking flight 
or jumping off a very tall cliff. It's your choice, which whichever you want the feeling to be. But I will copy paste the new effects for you and what the anklet itself does. So this is just like a flight unit that attaches to your armor? Uh, in a sense, yeah. Because I took all, right. all of the components that I thought were pretty neat from that falcon armor. And I decided to spice it up alongside making my own blueprints for it so that I could mass produce it. Because this is going to be very, very useful for our security ops team. Just, I only think, the only thing I ask from you about the Falcon armor, since it's not my design and I'm not its creator, is that you add additional security measures so these, this type of technology doesn't get stolen or replicated by anyone else. Oh, trust. I already did. I I made sure to take every and any security measure necessary to make sure that this does not fall into the wrong hands. I've made my own authentication system for it. Ah. Yeah, that's what that, uh, that pulse was when you, well, when the anklet put itself on you guys. But in terms of gameplay, uh, if you cite the Falcon Armor recipe note in your notes tab, you will see all of the individual effects and whatnot that the Falcon Armor gives you. And originally, you needed to equip the entire set in order to get the specialized pieces, but with the enhanced version, at your own leisure, you may switch any of your currently, currently equipped armor pieces for the enhanced falcon pieces, and you no longer need the entire set equipped. So, for example, if you wanted to receive the benefits of critical reversal, you would swap out your current helmet for the Enhanced Falcon's Gaze helmet. And when you do so, granted, you do have to make the appropriate stat adjustments, but you will gain the Sight Enhancer passive and the Critical Reversal passive without needing the rest of the set equipped. And with What's up? Reading everything. Okay. All stats. And with original the version. enhanced. Well, I don't have the original version, so I don't know the stats. Do you not have access to the recipe thing? Let me see. Oh, there. Just popped up. Yep. And with the Falcon Anklet, with that equipped, uh, as long as you have that on. Uh, you can, as I have written, take flight at any given moment for an initial cost of 300 MP and then 50 MP per movement action you decide to take. And when used in combat, it gains special properties. And when used outside of combat, you can more or less become a jet if you wanted to. But just keep in mind the conditions to fly at maximum speed and power. Then as I finish equipping the ar the other armor, this one pops up. <laughs> well, I mean, you did ask about it last time, and I told you I was going to get it back pretty soon. <clears throat> but, yeah, you, you do not, again... You do not have to fully equip the enhanced Falcon armor to receive any of the benefits from the original versions. 
anymore. Oh, with the anklet, we could just fly just with the anklet. That's it. Yep. Because... Uh, have either of you played Mega Man X5? No. No. Nope. Alright, let me grab an image of the Falcon armor for you. Oh, I know how it looks like. Because I remember seeing an image of it a while back. Mm -hmm. So when when you activate the flight gear from the anklet itself, instead of being fully encompassed in armor, only your... Uh, your feet will take the appearance of these boots once I send this image. Because before, when you put on the entire armor, it canonically looked like the Falcon armor itself from Mega Man X5. Shit looks heavy. It looks heavy, but it doesn't really have any weight to it, except when, you know, the the flight gear is activated. Because, as you know, since your main man likes to work with nano machines and stuff, when it, when the anklet is activated, then nano machines will come out, cover over your feet, and you can fly, just like that. Oh, uh, it's like, okay. And it also gives you an attack that you can only use when flight mode is activated. Air crash. <laughs> That's going to turn into a dynamic entry, dude. <laughs> hey, I have to equip this Falcon anklet. So remind me, when you... I have to have at least one piece of uh, enhanced falcon armor equipped to get its uh, abilities. Mm -hmm. So, for example, like I said earlier, if you wanted the benefits of <clears throat> uh, critical reversal from the helmet piece, mm -hmm. you would swap out your uh, Lux circlet for the Falcon Gaze, make the appropriate stat adjustments, and then you would be benefiting from Sight Enhancers and Critical Reversal. Okay. And then the same thing for the body piece, arm piece, foot piece, etc. Because it is metal based armor, lightning damage. Oh, that part doesn't apply anymore. Yeah. I got that shit upgraded first thing. <laughs> yeah. I remember that piece. Oh, that, that part. Okay, so for now, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to have the anklet equipped and maybe let me look at the the circlet. Times like this, I wish uh, Roll20 had loadouts. Yeah, that would be nice. But instead, you would have to make, like, a, a completely different character sheet for that. But, uh, yep. I figure you, you guys went without it long enough. And 
I've made all my adjustments and bonuses and whatnot to it already, so I forgot to give it back. Okay. So all the armor pieces... So you don't have to have it equipped to get its, its stat bonuses. That's good. All you really have to do is just equip the one piece to get all the effects. Yeah, you know, all the effects from that one individual piece. The anklet, right? Yeah, the the anklet is a that's a special accessory sauce, so you don't have to do anything with that. But I don't really have to put on any of the other pieces. I could just use the anklet, right? No, 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 no. So the anklet is its own separate thing. That's different from the armor itself. The anklet is what gives you the the flight ability and uh, the passive that come with that. The armor itself is different. The buffs are from the armor pieces, right? Yes. Equipped it. All stats of the original version are increased by 4. You do not need to equip the entire set to get any of the effects. I think we're confused here, right, Rick? Uh, a little bit, yeah. Okay, where we I know I that help out. Okay. Here? Okay, I know that the like I know that the extra skills like the uh what was it? Where is the falcon armor helmet? The Falcon Gaze, like, I know that the skills, uh, Sight Enhance and Critical Reversal, I know we need to have that equipped in order to benefit from the skills, but the stats, like the plus 10 defense, the 5 constitution, the 5 debuff, do we have to have the armor equipped for that or no? The circlet does that for you. No, you need to have the armor equipped for the stat increase, like the defense and the debuff resist. But the anklet okay. gives no stats. The anklet's what gives you the uh, your flight ability back. Okay. We could just fly with it. Yes. Okay, so it's just a separate flight unit. All right. Yes. That's what I wanted to know. But if we want those skills from the original armor, we would have to equip the enhanced version pieces, right? Yes. Okay. That's what. I'm... Okay. So right now, if I don't want to even put any of the Falcon armor armor on. I could still fly because the anklet, right? Yes. <laughs> That's my confusion. Okay. Okay. My bad. No, no, no. It's, it's not your bad. It's us being confused like idiots. <laughs> <laughs> it's us being dumb. That's it. <clears throat> so, with us being equipped with the fel the anklet, what do we get? Like, what do we have to put onto a skill? So do we get all that stuff that's stated that you just put there. Yes. With just the Falcon. So with the anklet, you anklet. get the enhanced flight ability, you get air barrier, and you get the air, air crash. crash attack. When the anklet is equipped, you get at the initial cost of 300. Do we get that one too? Yes. Take flight. <laughs> flight is taken in combat. Air barrier automatically activates. Holy shit, I just noticed that it costs 300 to fly. Yep. Air crash. So, air crash. I have to set that up. Mm hmm. That's what I've got to do. And what are these stages? This is what I'm not understanding. Stage and level 1, level 2. So, you can, <laughs> for additional NP, uh, increase the intensity of air crash from one to three so at level three one levels of air crash basically yeah so level one it's just it's just a, a tackle attack pretty much at level two you can spend additional mp to knock the enemy off their feet so that on their next turn they have to spend that entire turn getting up 
and then at level 3, you knock them prone and lower their defense by 10, but because of the level of intensity that you collided into them, you take recoil damage. And all versions of the air crash attack, which I forgot to include, uh, all versions of the air crash attack physically move you from your current location right next to the enemy. Oh, bitch. Three D16s. So we have to add air crash as an attack? Yes. Okay. Character's just just gonna shell cosmic cyclone and just crash into the enemy. <laughs> okay, uh where is the air crash stat? 1d16 plus strength and attack. So 1d that be correct? You would put the attack in the first line, right, Riku? So it would be strength plus your attack. Mm -hmm. And then the damage line would be 3d16s plus strength. Right? Yes. Since I'm a weak boy, it's a weak hit. <laughs> <laughs> One D sixteen plus strength and attack. Three D sixteen. One D sixteen. Three D sixteen. Oh, three D sixteens. Never mind. Yeah. So it's gonna hit hard for you. <laughs> oh God, I didn't know Riku was trying to turn me into a cruise missile. <laughs> you have any idea how much damage those things do in IRL? Enough. A lot. While this is going on, Henry waddles over to Dreva and asks, Hey, can you teach me that wind spell? Um. Basic aerobic. Like the first stage of it. Oh, did fuck. You, you uh, want to learn arrow? Yeah, arrow. Uh, sure. Uh, should probably, let, let's go over here and practice with some paper. Uh, attack strength, the number is, uh, st Chris, uh, no, uh, Riku, remind me quickly, your strength is based on... The small number or the big number? The big number is the actual strength. The small number was just the amount of points it has. Uh, so the number at the top, that's your modifier. Number on the bottom is your actual strength stat. Okay, okay. So I put the actual strength stat, not the modifier, right? Yep. Do I have to roll anything to learn the spell? Uh, you will, but not yet. Okay. Let me just type this out correctly. Okay. So, <coughs> Drava pulls out a small piece of paper from One. her inventory, and she places it on the table. And she proceeds to explain the basics of, uh, you said first level wind, right? Can I learn higher? <laughs> no, I mean, you can, but I'm just, I'm just making sure so I don't get okay, my own. whatever the highest level she could teach me. Uh, she can teach you, uh, arrow two. 
She can't teach That's you Arrow fine. 3. Whatever you feel comfortable that I could learn. Okay. So, she pulled out a piece of paper. She sat on the table. And she instructs you to open your hands. And imagine that you are holding a bowl. <clears throat> a moderate-sized bowl in your hand. And then she explains to you to... Imagine that you are taking your own internal magical energy and try to visualize it moving around within the small bowl that you have. And then once you do that, imagine it speeding up and then try to think about okay, a nice... Good spring winter breeze whichever one you prefer and then just dip just a little bit more magic into it does that make sense and after she asked that please roll intelligence All right, that's a that's a success. Uh, you may answer in whichever way you like. Henry's like really trying there, like sweating and trying to figure it out, and it just floats up. <laughs> okay, so now now that we've got this, with that same piece of paper, now. Open your hands just a bit more and try to move the wind in front of you onto the paper and try to just lift it up a little bit higher off the table. Hmm. Teaching Henry how to use wind magic? Yeah, he asked, and I figured the more wind uses, the better. And, Riku, uh, I got the air crash right. Right? Yeah, you got it right. Jesus Christ, that looks painful. <laughs> uh, Henry, please roll uh, wisdom, please. Alright, that's a pass. So, uh, I'll let you describe... How <clears throat> how you go about doing that? Because there's one oh. more step to this. So well, Henry's just thinking of it like an aircraft, how he used to work on aircrafts before, how it's supposed to be aerodynamic and everything. Mm -hmm. He just pushes it slightly. With All right. The wind. All right. Good. Good. Java says. And now, now that you've got your basis founded and you've managed to pick up the paper now try to in a sense sharpen the wind around the paper and tear it up into as many pieces as you can i'm just observing so i could learn it too and for this I'm going to give you the exact uh, stat block calculation for uh, Aurora and just roll this. I just have to roll that? Yep. What level is Aurora? Is win two, tier two magic. Cool. I'm going to use Proto Materia just to learn it. I would have to put that in. Yep. As a skill? Okay. Yep. That's bothering me that it's not capitalized. Interesting. I asked Reva, do you mind if I grab a piece of paper? 
Uh, yeah, go for it. Yeah, I'm gonna roll sleight of hand because I'm gonna make a paper airplane. Do I have to roll to do what he's doing? Mm. Oh, no, wait. When seeing or struck by tier two or below, it's... Okay, never mind. I'm already learning it. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, you can if you want to, but you don't have to. Yeah. Uh... Okay, so... Oh, I forgot to give you the MP cost for it. Uh, win 2 costs... 20 MP. Proto Aurora. Aurora. How much? 20 MP? Yep. Oh. Uh... Intellect? How much intellect do I have? 35. I remember, Rick, for your proto magic spells, it will be the original stat stats for it. So the 2d6 plus your magic attack plus half of your attack stat. Yep. 2d6 and... Is it half my magical attack? Nope. Or is it my full magic attack? Full. Okay. Yeah, for Yashua, because he isn't as good of a caster as you or Dreva, uh, his magic attacks only get uh, half of his actual attack stat. Because I'm pretty sure his actual magic attack is like 111. 110. 110 <laughs> compared to... What your? What is your magic? So attack? it's uh, so it's just my physical attack, nothing to do with magic attack, or is it like combined together? Because uh, I don't know. It's your actual magic attack stat plus okay. uh half of five thirty five. So it would it would look like it would look like this. Uh, six five thirty five divided by two two sixty seven. Uh, Your proto arrow Aurora would look like that. Yeah, but I'm having a hard time setting it up here because I have my attack that's intellect thirty five. No, 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 it's not being based off your intelligence stat. It's just oh. a physical attack. Yeah, it's it's just... Okay. Yeah, so take that part out. So you've got... So here would go the 110. Oh, and 110? Then here would go the 260... 267. The type is wind. And then when we roll it, it comes out like that. Okay. Here, let me take a quick look at it quickly, how, how you did it. So, the first attack roll is the magic, the second is the physical, right? Mm-hmm. Damn it, okay, so there's no damage to it, it's just damage, attack, and damage. Okay. <clears throat> just making sure. Yep, no problem. So... So who's gonna describe how you use your magic? Because I don't know if you learned it yet. In character. Oh, Henry just forces all the... <clears throat> all the magic and tears apart the paper. Ah. Uh, I just make a paper airplane. I leave it on the table. 
and I use a little bit of wind magic to get it to take off. And then I'm just I'm I'm just manipulated just by like uh moving my index finger around. Okay. Like it's a wand. And Drava she clasps her hands together and saying, Wow, you two are pretty fast learners. It took me a week to get that right. Henry looks at Joshua's airplane and just destroys it with one <laughs> Damn. Hold on. <laughs> Right, right before you try to do that, I was gonna cast Proto Aurora and just make it take off like a rocket. You can. Roll and wisdom to see how well you control that. All right. And I roll something to still try to destroy it. <laughs> Uh, we'll see what his wisdom roll is first. Okay. Uh, Henry, you can roll. Roll insight. Okay. So, let's say that Yashua's plane is buzzing around the place pretty doggone fast and the longer Henry watches it buzz around the more mischievous his airplane shattering plan becomes oh no and you may act this out however you want to but because of uh, the insight roll beating the wisdom roll your plane will wind up destroyed uh, I wanted to, I, I wanted to see if I could roll something for evasive maneuvers. <laughs> Yasko was a pilot before. Uh, okay, so now you said that. This is the battle of the arcane. <laughs> let's do, let's do an intelligence roll, but it's gonna have to be a pretty good one. As I'll roll my own dice against this one. Alright. Okay, so let's see. Stop falling off my desk. There we go. Alright. Hmm. Okay. So. I have an 18. You rolled an 18. So now we're I'm going to roll my my 1d6. If I get higher than a 3, I lose. If I get lower than a 3, you win. If I stop rolling off my desk. All right. I lost. So you win this one, and you can do your evasive maneuvers. So, do you know what a Cobra maneuver is? Absolutely not. It's when, it's when a fighter jet literally flips its uh its whole frame upwards, and it just slows down. But like, and also just like fall backwards. It's to go up and then drops down. Like, uh, like its nose is pointing up, but mm -hmm. then since, since it's breaking its, uh, its airflow, it just, like, completely halts and just falls back, but, like, still, but, like, still maintains its, uh, its left, but just Make barely. A like a roller coaster that goes all the way up and then drops straight down. Oh, okay. All right. We can do that. So yeah, it just... It's... The nose of the air, paper airplane points up, and then it just... Rupsly, like, stops and just dives, and then it just flies back up again. And then Henry blows it up like a firework. <laughs> <laughs> when it's at its peak height. Why are you always trying to blow shit up? 
I'm trying to make a nice paper explosion, and you're dodging. <laughs> Stop trying to ruin my paper airplane. And the entire time, Draper is just watching as two grown men have a paper airplane fight. <laughs> Grown man. Yeah. Yashua cries because he's not a man yet. <laughs> <laughs> he's still young. <laughs> so as all of that was going down, uh, you all were mostly enthralled in what you were doing, and you didn't notice uh, Francesca just watching you two have fun. With what was going on but when the plane fighting comes to an end you then take notice of her yeah I take notice cuz I just I, I see a looming shadow and then I look up hi <laughs> uh, hello any new missions um no we don't really have any on the docket, and, uh, truth be told, you and yours more or less did everything that we really needed help with, plus some extra, so if you want, I can find something for you to do, or, um, you could go take a look at how all the repairs in the city are coming along. I have an idea. <laughs> Honestly, that does sound like a good idea. We should... Henry, we should take... Henry turns to Yashua and says, Time for more ammo. <laughs> what? Oh, uh, yeah. Time to go I... visit Cuban. <laughs> we have to go see Cuban. Oh, now that you mention that, a few days ago he did mention, um, that he just wanted you guys to drop by. He didn't say he had anything special for you all. He just sent me a, a text saying to, hey, tell the guys to swing by when they wake up. Not all too sure what that's supposed to mean, though. I know exactly what it means. Let's go! One sec. Henry runs over to Diablo and just lets him know that if anything, he'll request for him to come. But he could have a good time with Garland. And... To that he will he'll like he'll look in your general direction give you like a like like a half nod and then kind of like wave you off Let's make our way out of the building, then. Alright. Oh, I had one question. What's up? Do I still have Diablo's book attached to my side? So, in the... <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, that was bad. Uh, in the physical world, it has shrunken down to the size of a notepad. <laughs> and the actual, like... The original size of the book is attached, like, like physically attached to Diablos. So in a sense, you still have it. It's just smaller. Okay. And no, you still can't read its contents. Oh no, but I'm thinking like if in case of trouble, I just rip out a page and he gets someone. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have that in mind, but now I do. 
So yeah, you can do that. Uh, he could stay places that I don't have to bother him. He could enjoy himself. Only but when up... I really do need him, I need to rip the page and say, "Get your ass over here." Only up to a certain distance, like from okay. from from here to Cuban shop will be, let's say, like the maximum distance he can be away from you before he's just like automatically snapped to where you are. But like in town. Yes. Basically. Yeah, right. Over time, uh, that distance limit will increase, but again, since this is a brand new deal with you and him, you can only go so far. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, and and another thing, um, when he is summoned, so to say, uh, the farther you go, you get away from him, uh, your uh, telepathic communication will begin to bug out. So instead of it sounding, you know, like normal stuff as if you're right next to him, uh, it'll inevitably start to sound like this and just cutting out and all that. Bad reception. Yep. That sound like someone lagging on the mic. I mean, <laughs> that's more or less what I had in mind for it. You could just say that. It's going to sound like someone lagging. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I will move us over. And. Ooh, excuse me. Uh, as you all make your way to Cuban shop, you take notice of the fact that, uh, Again, you do see more people that you helped out between your time getting here and now. And they're doing things like well, fixing holes in the streets, uh, replacing bricks on buildings, repairing the pavement and whatnot, fixing some signs, uh, picking up some glass and whatnot, looking for uh, small things of note like phones and rings and other important valuables that might have gone missing during all the chaos and as you do so you once again walk past Osiris who appears to be in conversation with some of these civilians as if she is looking for uh, guidance so to say on where to go next Where are we entering from the top? Uh, you are entering from the bottom left of the map. And Cuban as... shop was just up here, right? Yep. And as you approach the crosswalk, uh, you see a man that doesn't look all that familiar to you. But it, he uh, just waves over and says, Hey, thanks for all your help, guys. I really appreciate it. You you really saved this city's bacon. I just figured I'd let you know that. And then he goes back to what he was doing. Hmm. It looks like everything is coming along just... I hope nobody got trapped under debris or anything. I hope search and rescue finds any trapped civilians. I say this in character. That's up to Henry to respond because Dreva is not present in this scene. Henry just looks at Yashua and says, well, I'm pretty sure the demon got got them all out safely. They're really handy. And I bet. About to get ready to cross the road, look both ways. There's there cars going by. Uh, nope. They are coming to a slow stop, as it is now your chance to cross the street. Neat, neat, neat. Henry just. He goes across looking both ways. 
Yeah, because last time I remember when we tried to rush over to save Jet, we almost got hit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna knock at this man's door. When Yashua is just knocking, Henry just busts in the door. <laughs> oh, okay. Hey, we're. Oh, it's you guys. Um. I was. Well, if you were regular customers, I was gonna say we weren't necessarily open just yet. But. I'm assuming Chief mentioned I wanted to see you guys. Yeah, that's why we're here. All right, so first things first, uh, magically and I guess uh, spiritually, how you guys feeling after all that whatever you had to deal with? Henry does a twirl around. Don't you notice anything different with me? Uh, first things first, never twirl like that again. <laughs> uh, second. Uh, where the uh, where the markings and the tattoos come from? Uh, those weren't really the well, except for the creepy thing on your forehead. Those weren't really there last time I saw you. Yeah. Uh, Henry's dead. That's the Oblos you're talking to. We replaced them. Huh? Henry just stares at Yashua like, really, really, bro. <laughs> Only kidding. It's still Henry, except uh, Diablos and Henry formed a contract together. He's a plus one. They're all buddy buddies now. I thought Diablos was bad, though. <laughs> he really isn't. He's actually just a cinnamon, uh, what, what was it called? A cinnamon roll? Henry starts laughing. Cinnamon roll. <laughs> so, you you mean to honestly sit here and tell me that this psycho demon thing is nice? His brother is psycho, yes, but not Diablos. He has They're a twins. brother? <laughs> yes. His brother, his name is Chaos. They're twins, mind you. What Just chaos is a bad one. Diablos is a good boy. What in the fuck? I have a, f I have some phone calls I need to make. I can do those later though. Um, but uh, that's that that's not why I called you guys here. Uh, I, Yashua, you know Greg, right? The duck. Yeah. Yeah, he stopped by the other day and he asked about you guys. And I told him what I remembered because I my memory kind of sucks sometimes. But I did tell him you guys were alive. You're doing okay. And you all are coming into your own pretty good. I mentioned the current situation with the city I was, what now, that was going on. And he offered to help but when he says help there's like a 99% chance things are going to get exponentially worse so I turned him down huh I mean uh, you know him more than us so yeah it was probably for the best yeah cause the last time he decided he was going to help with something he almost burned down my shop if yeah, i were to put not... henry and greg on a psycho scale uh greg makes henry look like an ant in comparison henry's just rummaging through papers <laughs> in boxes what did you say about me I said you know we're near a cycle as this duck I know. Psycho duck, huh? But yeah, uh, Henry went through drastic changes. I myself, 
I mean, Yasha stops and thinks. Yeah, not too many changes. I still look the same. Granted, Yashua doesn't know about the the his differences in appearance. Yeah. Then no one no one mentioned it to him. And Cuban says, uh, "Yeah, about that." He snaps his fingers, and a mirror shows up in front of him. So you mean to tell me between the last time we spoke and today, you suddenly decided to dye your hair in the middle of war? Or I almost might. war? What are you- Henry starts giggling. <laughs> uh, how did this- And you never mentioned this, Henry? That perhaps- I might have. Uh... Henry just states, "Well, Diablo said it would be a lot more fun this way." <laughs> Surprised Drava hasn't mentioned anything. Is she? Is she in and on it too? Henry just worked. <laughs> oh my god! I can't believe you three. <laughs> Uh, Yashua just takes a closer look at the mirror and just inspects everything. As you are examining yourself, please do a history roll. History roll. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hold on, my mouse is refusing to work. You remember that Drava was indeed there with you uh, when you were having your conversation with Korra, and that you're you're pretty sure, say like seventy percent sure, that she saw the change, but just chose not to say anything. Yasha just sighs at remembering. Can I roll to see if I find anything good in the paper pile? Um, uh, please roll. Investigation. Probably going to fail this roll because I kept clicking things earlier. Anyways, I th I think the hair and eye color changes might have to do with the proto material I absorbed. The what? He says as he quickly shoves his hand under his desk to grab those uh, magic reading glasses. He used on you all last time. And uh, a proto materia. That's what Korra called it. I have a demon. He has a proto materia. Who is Korra? Um. And he just looks at Yashra like with a face of don't say anything. I just shrug. He's someone divine, I would say. Eh. Whatever. Don't care. Uh but uh, about what you mentioned earlier, though, let me just put these on. I hope and... it doesn't break his glasses when he tries to read it. Or read me. I'm gonna roll my 1d12. So I got a 1. So 
so back to ones, Riku. Yeah, I guess I'm back to one. <laughs> uh, so as he is doing his reading, uh, an error, <clears throat> an error message shows up on his side of the lens, and in response he says, "What happened?" between last time and now because i have never gotten an error message on these things before Wh something in you ch changed because before you were at like like a b something for healing i got readings in everything before i started getting error messages spill the beans but don't spill them too fast. I want to write it down. Because <laughs> he pulls out a notepad. We've um, been through a lot of combat in the past few days. Well, in your case, weeks. Time dilation. So Henry goes, you want to see something cool? And then he casts Jolt onto... Yashua. <laughs> Jolt? Yeah, Jolt. <sighs> Time to write down Proto Jolt, you bastard. <laughs> no, 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 no. Wait, I have an idea. Roll sleight of hand, and Henry, and uh, you a actually cast Jolt at him. I'm gonna roll, roll this again. A three, bro. Damn. All right. So Henry cast Jolt at the mention, saying, "Hey, want to see something cool?" And Yashua, without even looking in his general direction, you extend your left hand and you grab it right out of the air, and you take a look at it. And you absorb the spell. Now, I will say that because Jolt is a class-based spell and not a average tier-based spell, that isn't going to be learned. Okay. However, however, let's say that for the sake of this interaction, you absorb it and you gain 10 MP for it. And there's like a little blue glow around your hand. Nice. And before we continue Wait. with this, Henry, Can as you? for your investigation role, you find the haste spell. Yeah. So when you say I gain 10 MP, I just recover 10 MP or just permanently gain 10 MP? Oh, you just recover 10 MP. Okay. Yeah, I'm already full of MP. <laughs> I wanted to just, like, flick it back at him. Oh, uh, yeah, sure. You want to learn haste? <laughs> what does that do? <laughs> Makes you faster. <laughs> well, I say it's in character. It depends how the spell functions. If... Oh, Henry walks up to uh, Cuban and says how much for the haste spell. Can't walk out of the store with <laughs> Um. Let's let's do this. In exchange for giving me as much detail as you can over the last few weeks and events and stuff. You can have it for free, but I want to know everything because <sighs> whatever's going on with your buddy, I want to know. Just, just, just morbid, overpowering curiosity. Do you believe Henry in walks God? Over to Yashua and whispers in his ear. I think we should give Cuban a barrel of rum. <laughs> so it'd be a long story. Do I believe <sighs> in who? What? I 
mean, I know gods are a thing, but I uh, don't really care. Doesn't have much to do with my business. Why you say that now? Here, my tree, I materialized like five barrels of fucking alcohol. Oh, this is going to be a long one, isn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, let me go in the back and get some mugs. <laughs> he steps into the back room, comes out with a couple of mugs, sits them down on the counter. He waves his hand and he turns the sign on the shop around from uh, closed to delayed opening. And then he turns back to you guys. Hey. Yashua just uh, projects a like a screen from his uh, digitizer. Because everything that Yashua does is recorded. Okay. So he... Do I have to explain everything in detail, like, actually, or we're just going to say that we did? Uh, you can give, like... You can, do, you can uh, spark notes it. And I'll Anyways. say that for your explanation... Uh, six hours go by. Okay. So I'm just going to... Six hours go by, and like we're at the end of what happened with uh, fighting Osiris. Okay. And then there's this, this big phoenix, and, and I summoned Diablos, and he grew to this huge size, and he just beat the crap out of the phoenix with a giant flare. And then we jumped through the portal, and then we passed out, and then now we're here. Well, granted, we couldn't do all that without, uh, me lowering her level. Don't forget I plucked her feathers. Oh, yeah. He ran up and plucked that chicken. <laughs> <laughs> I laugh in character, too. Plucked that chicken. That was pretty good. So, you guys mean to tell me that not only did you stop a cult, you also fought and lived through an experience with a phoenix. Not the first time we fight one. Where is she? Oh, she's she's currently with Francesca right now. They're repairing they're repairing the city. I need her here right now. I uh, have to meet her. You'll have your chance to meet her. I need to meet her right now. This is not a drill. This is not a joke. You can see the, gets on the communicator. You can see the sparkles in his eyes getting brighter and brighter and brighter. My goodness, you're excited. Uh let me get into contact with Frankie quickly. See if she could have <coughs> I caught Frankie on the tombstone with, like, trying to remember how to use it since it's magic type that he's used to. Henry just walks over and speed dials Frankie. <laughs> oh, thanks uh, for him. <laughs> you both call her, or well, Henry, you speed dial call her and you can hear music playing in the background. Yes, hello? Uh, hey Frankie, I need you here quick. For... Uh, Cuban needs to talk to you. The shopkeep, who keeps helping us out. Okay, I'll be there in... 20 seconds. Bring Osiris with you. I'll be there in 40 seconds. <laughs> As she hangs up, and then, sure enough, later, 40 seconds go by. And... Standing before you are both Osiris and Francesca with uh, minor, and I use minor very loosely, minor trail of lightning behind them. Huh. I 
Henry runs over to Cyrus and gives her a hug. Oh no. <laughs> the fire doesn't work on me now. <laughs> Roll. Charisma. <laughs> I wanted to roll something to grab him from the color and pull him back, but let's see what 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 he rolls for charisma. Oh, nice. Okay, if you still want to go through with that, roll dexterity. Now, the thing is, is that I'll roll it like after, like he's hugging her, but then I pull him back out of her. Oh, okay. If she doesn't like it. <laughs> uh, for her. We need to train her to be normalized, and I'm extremely abnormal. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Yeah, I wouldn't what want if you a little to... kid goes and hugs her. You want her to roast the living shit? Well, I'm pretty sure she knows not to roast a child. You, on the other hand, I'm sure she'll roast happily. The and closer you I'm get beaten. with your arms open, she. She reels back her right arm and force palms you away from her. Oof. Henry's eyes sparkle. <laughs> and in in response to that, she said, I don't do physical contact. Don't don't touch me. She's giving like this really suspicious, like, up and down eye glance look at her. I mean, look at you. Whoops, my bad. Yasha says, "You know what? I don't blame you. He's real sus sometimes." The both of you are sus, as you put it to me. Why am I here? Aren't I supposed to be helping with the restoration efforts? And Francesca yes. speaks up and she says, uh, yeah, you are, but for whatever reason, Cuban wanted to see you. Who is this Cuban? And as she says that, Cuban gets up from behind the desk and when he is properly standing, you notice that he is just barely taller than Francesca, which, as a reminder, Francesca is eight feet tall. And he more or less blitzes his way past uh, Yashua and Henry, and he stops right in front of Osiris. And he says, so, you're the phoenix they were talking about, yeah? And, just to describe the scene, uh, I believe I said Osiris was about, let's say, 5'8", five, 5'6", five, one of those numbers. Mm -hmm. And she is standing next to a 8'2", sized man. Damn. I didn't know Cuban was that tall. Yeah, that's because that's ever since you've seen him from the beginning, he was always, like, half-standing yeah. behind the counter so he could appear more friendly to people. <laughs> he was just on his knees. Yeah. <laughs> He's on his knees. Yashua looks up at Cuban and we're like, Ah, right. I had a, I had your, the suspicion you were taller. Henry's still on the floor, just he's a giant. <laughs> and in response to that, uh, Osiris preemptively leaps backwards a bit, and she conjures a ball of black flame in her hand. Ready to hurl it at Cuban. No, no, Cyrus, he means well. He's no threat. Henry rushes in front of Cuban just in case anything. She has a 
she has an unfriendly, feral type look in her eye. But she inevitably uh, quells the flame within her hand and stands normally again. Did you bring me here just for the sake of entertaining this foolishness? Or was there something important that I was needed here for? I would like to know the same thing, Cuban. I just look up at him. Yeah, so there's a... Uh... Wow, I never thought I'd meet my favorite mystical creature in person before. Um, Mystical? <gasps> wow. This is this is amazing. And he goes to Joshua. Why he didn't believe in divine beef? Ah, <laughs> new faith restored, I guess. Man, wow. Um, okay, okay, okay. Whew. Calm down. Calm down. Okay, so. First things first. Um. I, in a sense, want to learn everything there is about you being the phoenix. Uh, thing number two is you would like... I'm not saying my business is in bad shape, but if word got around that, uh, you know, I knew a, an actual phoenix and I, c I could prove their existence, I would really boost my sales. And then... Uh... Walks over to Cuban. Picture. Says, He's been alone too long. <laughs> she what? He looks down. What? What? What say? <laughs> what about being alone? You two need a room. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Yasha just face palms, and like you hear it, like there's like a shock wave when he face palms. <laughs> Uh, hold on, hold on. I have Cyrus. something for this. I have something for this. Give me one sec. Uh, uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I'm gonna roll. Uh, you can see under Osiris's hood of what you can see of her face that underneath her gray, <clears throat> not necessarily gray, but kind of ashy white looking skin. Uh, she turns a little bit red at, at hearing you say that. <laughs> he walks over to her and says, He has a crush on you. You're his idol. <laughs> he just walks away. <laughs> and Cuban looks at Henry, kind of... Blushing too? Kind of... Well, deadpan and trying not to laugh. But he... He does his best to ignore that comment and continues fanboying. Hey, while that's <laughs> happening, when I face palmed, it created a small shockwave and I lost 10 damage. I lost 10 HP. <laughs> Jeez, you I hit face palmed that hard? I face, face palmed palm that hard when, I, <laughs> when he said that. Damn. But remember, he's just still learning to control this wind magic. So he smacked himself with the wind magic. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Let's go with that. <laughs> I'm a lot powerful than I used to be, so my body is still getting tuned, accustomed to it. Right, right. All right. So with that having uh, taken place, um, Cuban is 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 attempting. To get Osiris to agree to take a picture with him. As Francesca saunters over to you two. And she says. Well. This was an unexpected turn of events. Wouldn't you say? He goes to Frenchie and says. Hey. Can we get her to work here? After the repairs have been done? I think they'll get along. And it'll give her her freedom. Well... Plus, you could always come check on her at any time. You'll know where she is. 
that is very, very true. Um, I'll have a talk with Cuban once this is all said and done, because he typically likes to run his shop all by himself. It's because he's very, um, let's say meticulous to a very annoying degree about how he sets his displays up and stuff like that. Uh, additionally, I'm not all that sure for someone who's been alone for hundreds of thousands of years for their first bits of interaction to be, well, this, and working a customer service job. But... Well, you do learn all sorts of things in customer service. That is very true, Yashua. But I will, again, trust your judgment, and I'll set the proper things in motion. But the most important thing is that if she is to stay here, she needs to be registered as a citizen. And I'm not too not sure... Good. How registering a divine beast, and I, I shouldn't call my fellow woman a beast, even though she did almost destroy my city. Anyway, I'm not sure how getting citizenship for a creature like her would work. He just says, why don't you do the same thing that you did for me? Well, see, that's different, because you're a a regular human from a different dimension, but you're still a regular human, so the process was different for you. Is he a regular human? You just look at the markings and the jewel on his forehead? I don't think so. You know what? I take that back. You're not a regular human anymore. But when you first got here, you were. So I'm not sure if we'd have to register her under... Uh, animal kin or any of the beast tribes or beast tribe sounds about right beast tribe sounds about right yeah she, she she could turn into a phoenix like look at her she's in her human form yeah but actually wait because that would then prove the existence of phoenixes and after she does that then she'd have to register the phoenix as a tribe on its own and huh Thanks, you two. I'm Henry smiling. going to make a note of that. I just give a thumbs up. And then, also going to have to find her a place of residency, as the current moment, she is um, still a prisoner, and she doesn't have a home outside of well, the literally... chambers they're all made for her. Henry goes to Frenchie and says, Hey. Don't you see that they're getting along nicely? Why don't they stay together? Ah, I don't think that's, that's a good too idea. soon. That's way too soon, buddy. That's too soon. You don't know if the Cuban has a separate base upstairs in the shop and all that. Yeah, you don't either. And besides, I don't want to wake up the next morning finding out there's a missing shop and, and replaced with a crater, do we? Yeah, sure brings up a good point, Henry. We can't leave her in the basement dungeon. It doesn't no, not gonna, that's no. not going to happen. I'm pretty sure uh, Frankie would just take her in momentarily until everything is sorted out. Or she could stay with us at the hotel. Uh, you bring I think up we're the... the best option to keep an eye on her. Cause... You bring up a fair point. Very good yeah, ideas. we could, as long as we're here. Yeah, that's very true. Uh, what I was going to say, though, is that once we get her, uh, her paperwork done and over with, there are some, some apartments around that are pretty good, and well, with, with me running the place, I can get her rent and stuff like that under control 
but there's there's a there's a lot of things that are gonna have to take place. Plus, uh, there is actually something else I need to inform you two about. And I, oh. I already told Drava on my way here, as we were dancing before you called. Um, there is a board of directors meeting that I have to attend in a few days. And you all don't have a choice and are going to come with me. That's fine. Um... I'm used to politics. I used to do escort missions. Henry, get serious. Where is it located? You remember the uh, cyber museum that I first took you to? Do you remember a certain door I told you to ignore? Oh no. Yeah, it's it it, it it's in there. The cyber museum. Now this is interesting. It's not what you think it might be. It's the... You don't have courthouses where you are, right? Uh, yeah, we do have court colonies. It's the equivalent of that. Disguised as a museum. Ah, it's, I see. It's not very fun, and I spend most of my days in there because I run the district. Ha <laughs> ha. Judge, jury, executioner. Yep. And, uh... I'll tell you now, it's not... going to be very pleasant for majority of this meeting. And depending on your choice of words things may either go very well or there might be some more thorns in my side that I'm gonna have to deal with hold on from our choice of words or just in general Henry face palms and he knows exactly what's going on your choice of words trouble? specifically yes you are unfortunately <laughs> You shouldn't of be, course. given that you've saved the entire city, but some of the directors don't share my sentiment. Of course great not. We power have... comes great responsibility. Yeah, we have to think about all of the collateral damage when we were fighting, too. Although they... I was trying my best to avoid all that. But remember, they might try to blame Osiris for the fault. Yeah, of course. Harry just sits down with his legs crossed, thinking. By the end of it all, someone needs to be held accountable. Yes, that. And... Um... Henry and Treva... You two were, admittedly... Sent here on a very important mission, but due to recent events, like when you first got engaged with Colt and you know, some individuals spreading things on the good, good and great internet, a lot of things were heavily taken out of context and misconstrued. And it was brought to light that as an unregistered entry, because you use someone else's credentials to come inside, being Henry's credentials when you were met at the security check, that let off one too many security breaches that I couldn't turn a blind eye to. But it's my fault. No, I do share some of the blame, since I did reveal that medallion that we found. Yeah, unfortunately. But, with all that being said, your standing amongst 
the directors will solely rely on how you articulate who you are and what you've done and what your end goal is, essentially. And you're also going to have to account for Osiris because I don't trust her choice of words when she has to explain her case to the directors, given, you know, how she talks. I I look over my shoulder just to see her interacting with Cuban. And then I look at back at Frenchie. Yeah, I agree. Henry walks over to Cuban and whispers in his ear, I need a special request spell. What kind of special request spell? I need the spell bubble. What for? Uh, things might get a little messy. And we might need it. Back it's left corner. To your phoenix. Back left corner, second shelf, third from the right. Henry runs over to the shelf and quickly looks at the wall. Do I have to roll something? To learn the Buble spell, that Buble. will be a 2d24 roll. Hmm. As much as I like a... What is that, a barrier spell? Yep. It is a barrier equal to double your current HP. 2d24? Huh. Yep. Okay, so then let me check your, your wisdom stat, it's a 4 modifier, and a 22. As so much as I would like a barrier spell, I think an emergency teleport six. would be more effective. You want teleport? It doesn't have to be a spell I could always learn, just something that will get us, that get us and everyone out. Well, I'm, I have haste, so if we could all haste ourselves, though. I don't care if it's a one-time use. We need a, an emergency out. No, no, no. I've learnt haste, so you could learn it from seeing it. It depends what level it is. It's level one. Yeah, haste is a uh, tier one green magic. So you can mm. learn it. Uh, Henry, it's going to take you... 20... No, 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 that's wrong. Hang on a sec. It's going to take you 18 minutes to read and understand the bubble spell in full. Okay. So, if I... so it got reduced because I got the 24, right? Uh, so... It got reduced because of your... Your wisdom modifier, well, your wisdom stat and your intelligence stat. What does the 24 get me? Nothing special? No. <laughs> oh, damn. I can't get 60% instead of 50%. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Bubble. Uh, Frankie, when exactly is this board of directors meeting going to happen? It will be taking place uh, four days from now. Four days from now. I don't know if I could accumulate enough energy before that. Energy for what? Yashua smiles at her. You remember that form he was in when we came back? The giant mech? Ah... If you think that'll help your case, by all means, please do it. Is there any wild enemies that we could go out and fight close by to town? Um, or any bounties we could take up? Yeah, that would be fine. Even bounties of any straggler cultists? Uh, we 
when I say we, I mean Zeril and his team, they did spot a few trying to escape, and they thought they went into hiding, but we know where they are. I mean, if you want to handle the stragglers and deal with a couple petty crimes, um, by all means, feel free. I mean, are we just going to have to write up an official uh, bounty manuscript for you all? If you will be so kind, please. Okay, um, I'll have those to you, um, within a few hours, but back to the issue at hand, I suppose. Yeah, they, I, I'm not, I don't think things are going to go horribly wrong. But, I will say that I am the only, I'm the only director with a heart amongst the ten of us, and I've used my entire arsenal trying to get them to ease up on the punishment that they want to give you all. And, um, let's just say that it's not a very reasonable punishment. If it involves ex execution, then I will retaliate. Same. I think the Diablos wouldn't stand down either. Well, half of them want to execute you. The other half want to bar you from the continent as a whole. Because, well, apparently, for whatever Gaia forsaken reason, they deem you all as that much of a threat, even though you saved the place. But they have it in their heads that it was a conspiracy level effort to bring the city as a whole to its knees. And one of the five that wants you bought from the continent is also on the Continental Board of Directors, so that's great. Hmm. There's something large at play here. Oh, yeah. And as much as I would like to go in and deal with everything by hand, as you know, there's only so much that I can do. Yasha folds his arm and closes his eyes and thinks. Hmm. Henry's just reading the page. Just try and figure out the bubble spell. You know, this may actually work to our favor. And what makes you say that? Well, if we're branded as criminals, we don't have to worry about laws shack shackling us down. But that's a path I don't exactly want to walk just yet. Yeah, I don't really see you guys going the branded criminal and then adopting the criminal life role. That eh, doesn't really fit with you lot no it's not the first time i pretend to be a criminal to accomplish a mission mind you but it's just something i like to hold on to as a last resort right and speaking of last resorts uh if push comes to shove and things get really dicey we can just we can, we can either do one of two things. We can call Angie to back you guys up. And... Wait, did she ever... T 
tell you that she was on the that she was on the continental board of directors? No, this is news news to us. Okay. Well, if things get really dicey, we can call her for backup, or we can collect testimonies of every single person that you've saved here in the city to help bolster your case. Hmm. Ah. Uh, might as well gather everyone, including Angie. Alright. I'll make a note of that, too. And I'm... I'm I'm really sorry you guys have to put up with this, but there are some things that are just outside of my reach. Uh, don't worry about it. I've been through worse. I believe it. And after Francesca says that she believes you, uh, Cuban turns to face you all again, and he is absolutely beaming excuse me beaming with excitement and joy and Osiris looks exhausted in the face from talking so much and trying her best to give as many one word answers as possible but he says <clears throat> Man, this is a dream come true. I uh, thanks for 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 uh, uh not killing her, guys. Really appreciate it. And Osiris cranes over from the side of him. Please kill me now. Kill me right now. I beg Henry, you. Henry walks over to Osiris and says, "Can you give me your hand for a second? No. Just trust me this once, please. You may hold the cloth on my garments. Harry just cast cure on her. You've been working too hard. <laughs> As the small rays of light circle around, <clears throat> excuse me. The small. Oh no! Rays of light circle around. Os I just remembered something. Osiris. She looks as if she has a bit of a bit of a small pained expression but it stops as she examines herself and she says that stung but I appreciate the effort Henry walks away uh okay <laughs> I know this as the player, but Yashra probably doesn't know. Can I investigate to see if he finds out what just happened? Yes. Another 18. <clears throat> and I got another one. Okay. <laughs> So, you stop and think for a moment to figure out why Osiris said that it stung as compared to a cure spell supposed to be a healing physical fatigue. And before long, you come to the conclusion that she's not necessarily alive in the same manner that you are. Ah, uh, you're an undead. 
she cast her gaze upon you, it took you long enough to realize that. Isn't that ironic? A phoenix that is supposed to grant and birth life is considered dead in her non-phoenix form. It's not your flaws, but your creator's. Henry is just looking at them too, like, what the fuck's going on? <laughs> well, in case you haven't noticed, when you tried to heal her, you actually wound kinda pinched her, since healing magic harms undead. Like, she's a zombie? Not exactly I'm a zombie. I'm not a zombie, you cretin! She is not a zombie, simply a... She's... Unique. She's not a zombie. Oh dear. <laughs> Just ignore him, Osiris. She resummons that orb of black flame ready to throw it at Henry. Uh, you could burn off his hair if you wish, but it's not gonna help with anything. Is the timer done? Is the timer done? <laughs> she instead placed the orb on the area where Henry tried to heal her and the, let's say, magical sting that was left on her is now gone. And he, with glowing eyes, runs up to her is like, what was that? Why? That was cool magic. <laughs> His eyes are just glowing. <laughs> Like, looking at her, like, I want that. <laughs> she steps a few feet away from you. <laughs> I slowly, like, start walking very close there. I just grab onto your collar, like, the back of your collar, and be like, uh uh uh. Lift me up, so I just wiggle my feet trying to get. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, All right. yes, yeah, hold on. Let me strength roll this then. Yeah, that's a pass. So I'm just like lifting you off the back of the collar. Magic. <laughs> nah, nah, behave. You'll eventually will learn everything that this world has to offer in due time. I want to know how it picked. <laughs> Why is he so annoying? Nah, you'll get used to his, uh... Charms. In due time. you call it? <laughs> yes. It's my polite way of calling you an idiot. I want the black fire. And Harry just, like, has a little fire on his finger, like, I want mine black. You know, can't you just ask Diablos? I'm sure he knows Black Flames as he, like, when Yosha says Black Flames, he, like, wiggles his fingers around, like, woo. Henry go, uh, <laughs> puts his fist in his other hand, he's like, huh, I never thought of that one. <laughs> uh, both of you, please roll Perception. Perception, okay. Mm -hmm. Perception. That's performance. Perfect. Okay. This is perfect because Henry's a fucking idiot. He can't perceive anything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Henry, you don't notice it, but Yashua, you turn to look at Osiris. For a very brief moment, as you were restraining Henry and commenting on what he probably should be doing, and you can see the fr from the corner of Osiris's mouth, the smallest, and I mean the bare minimum, smallest bits of a smirk form before she stops herself. Hmm. Henry up. Henry looks up to Yashua. What did you see? A bright future. 
But like, I don't reply to you. I just say that to myself. You let me down now. <laughs> I just drop you on your ass. Damn. <laughs> Without warning, I just drop you. Is there Anyways. anything else that I need to be here for? Can I please go back to my prior engagements? Ah, of course. Wait, 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 wait. I have one question. What do you want? Just... Henry just like browses his, like so you could turn back into the Phoenix at any time, right? If I decide to, yes. Do you have a small form also? Not like that big scary phoenix? No. Mm. That's good to know. I wonder if you ever known a phoenix to be small. Ah, uh, when they burn themselves out and reignite themselves. See, the phoenix where we come from are very similar to you, except they could control the intensity of their flames. And when they could do that, they could change their sizes by doing that. Since you are a phoenix, maybe you're capable of learning doing such a thing. And instead of such a violent flame, it was more of a gentler healing flame. The kids really liked it. Henry just is rubbing his butt after being dropped. Well, maybe if I wasn't a construct. Henry Possibly. Looks at her. Henry looks at her and says, you're not a construct anymore. You're yourself. <laughs> uh, please roll... Insight. You can notice that for a very brief moment, she doesn't know how to process that comment. And before you can comment on it, she summons her black smoke and she vanishes. Henry smiles. I finally got to her. Right. Right before we start our next objective, whoever that is. Cuban, any ammunitions? Huh? Oh. Uh. Uh. Yeah, I've got plenty. What you need? Uh, you know, this and this, maybe your whole stock. Shit, take it, I don't care. What, what, what I've had the experience to do just now is worth way more than those bullets in the back. Alright, I'm... Just show, just show me where you keep them, I'll help myself with... The ammunition I need. Uh. The. Uh, uh, sure. No, no problem. Just whatever you touch. Put it back the way you found it, even if it's empty. Yeah. Right. All right. 
I'm just gonna take his whole stock of ammo. <laughs> I don't care what it is. Okay. Uh. Bullets, grenades, missiles. Okay. Taking okay. Everything. Slow down. <laughs> Uh, he's not packing that kind of heat. I'm just saying in general. I'm just going to take his ammo. Uh, last time you bought fire, ice, and poison bullets. Mm hmm So, you're buying all that again. Uh, normally... He would charge you <gasps> around 30 something grand since you're taking everything. But he'll cut you a deal at 15 grand minimum. Sounds good. Alright. Uh, if you have nothing else. As far as interaction go with Francesca, I will remove her from the scene as what she needs to say has been said. Okay. Uh, I'm just grabbing the same ammo types. There's no new ammo types. Nope, nothing new. Same stuff. Okay. So what was it? Uh, how many bullets were there in each box? I believe I said a hundred. Okay. Uh, Henry, do you have anything else for Francesca? Not really, unless she wants to teach me how to run super fast with electricity. <laughs> he, just, he just smiles. Nah. Alright, so for her ex <coughs> exit sequence, he's going to say, Well, um, I'm going to get back to taking a well-deserved relaxation break uh yeah when you're done here if you want come back to the club though the club is now open again for dancing and refreshments and food and whatnot second verse same as the first when you all first got here and with that uh ta ta and as she Steps out of the building. Next thing you see is a trail of electricity just in the air, and she is gone. And Henry, you have finished reading the bubble spell. there any other spells I could grab from the shop? Or was that my limit for today? Uh, we'll say that's your limit for today. Oh, I wonder what more. I think you learned a lot already. I mean, you did learn, to be fair, you did learn three spells in a single day. But, but, on another note, no one else playing in the campaign has done that yet. Achievement unlocked. Done what? Learned multiple spells within uh -oh. a day. Can I get a special order from him to go look for one? For next time? Uh... What kind of special order? Like a, uh, like if you have this kind of thing, like fish it out for me or what? If you could find a spell for the next time we come by. Hmm. Yeah. Like not right now, but next time. Yeah. If he could find it. Okay, that works. Or even multiple times, maybe like two times. But just to have it, like... Let's say time. that... He'll look for something for you that he thinks will fit for you. Okay, that's good. Alrighty.
Anyways. We should head back. Zero may may need some help with something. Uh, yeah, uh, there may or may not be something you'll need. I'm just saying this in general, because right now, I clearly have no idea what we should do next. <laughs> I mean, Since in a couple of days, that's when we have to go to the board of directors meeting. Can't wait for that. Let's say that as you're leaving, you... Take some, wait, you you guys are leaving the store now, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I am. I am too. Okay. Just oh, want to be. Just want to be clear on that. So let's say that as you're leaving, you wave a goodbye to Cuban, and as you're making your way back to the club, you notice that most of the things that have been destroyed that you remember seeing are mostly fixed up um, now you see people just uh, hanging out working together taking a load off and when they see you whether or not you see them they'll wave at you say thanks and all that stuff uh, and then let's say that you hear a familiar chirp, and it's Xander. Our favorite fire chicken. Hey there, little guy. What's up? Hello, friends. How be thou? How be thou? Ah, <laughs> uh, we're doing all right. Just thinking about the board of directors ah yes Francesca told me about all that and let's just say that between us that woman can use some very colorful language when she needs to rant about something Oh, I don't doubt it. Henry looks at Xander and remembers that he's a chocobo and goes, Is there any way we could befriend any normal chocobos? <laughs> I mean... The simplest way is to offer them some food. But we... Even though I'm not... Normal, uh, my... Chocobo brethren and sisters and I, um, we all like this particular food called Gishel Greens. It's like, it's like, what's that stuff called? Nip? Catnip, that stuff. Uh, it, it, it makes yeah. the normal ones of us, uh, just that that becomes our sole focus so to say as for myself i'm not as drawn to it as my other feathered friends are but it is my favorite food next to just eating fire would you know of any ranches close by that we could actually acquire one of your brethren or sisters? Uh. Because we might need to get and take a speedy retreat. Well. Chocobos, given how big they can get, 
they're not necessarily allowed in the city most of the time. But there is a a chokeable ranch. Um about a two day trip from here going north? <gasps> Henry's eyes glisten and he looks to Yashua. We have our goal. Later. No, we can make it back. Two days there? But it'll be faster back with a chocobo. What makes you think we won't get there faster with our flight units? Yeah, but that's the thing. It'll take our mana. If we have to retreat, we'll be out of mana before we exit the city. I'll, I'll be fine without my mana. I won't. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll give you a piggyback ride. Or just drag you across the pavement. I think we should go. After the council. I think before the council. Okay, out of character. Would we make it back in time for the council? I don't think so. <laughs> uh, normally, no. With your mm -hmm. on on the back of a chocobo, also no. With your okay. flight unit, you would barely make it back in time. You you would barely make it back in time in the sense that you would get back to the city, but you would have no time to recover. Plus, you would also have to deal with the level of exhaustion that comes with flying that fast. Look, Henry, I'm also excited to see chocobos. They're very fascinating creatures. I mean, look at Xander. Marvelous. But we don't have the time right now. Henry's trying to think of a way to get this possible, but he feels defeated that he can't do it right now. <laughs> I promise we'll go after. If it goes south, we're going straight there. Yeah, that could be our next rendezvous point if things go south. Well, it's good to see that you all have a plan for whatever unfortunate event may or may not happen. Uh, my reasoning for grabbing your attention was that I just wanted to let you know that those... Ignis shards that I asked you all to retrieve as you went along dealing with the cult when you brought Osiris to her knees the rest of them that I sensed around the city they vanished but they are still in existence as they have all congest themselves into one very large Ignis crystal but it's in a location about eight or so hours away from here. It's not in the city then. No. Well, that's good. A Negonis Crystal could go off like a nuclear warhead. I think we need to go stop that first. Plus, we could recover. You want to go do that? Yeah. Let's go get Dre button. Do you know where exactly it is, Xander? Can you pinpoint it? Uh, let me see. He closes his eyes and he points his beak towards the air. And you can see, you can see a, a bit of heat waves starting to come off of him for a bit. But I see. he turns and he points towards the west. If you go back the way you came into the city, if you go straight in that direction, that is where the crystal resides. I 
Xander's telling us this information. Henry communicates with Diablo to bring Dreva to the edge, the west edge of the town. Better yet, we should go to the club and inform uh, Zero Frankie that we have a new mission to take on. We could do that over the communicator. Why waste time? We can all meet up at town, communicate it, and then go. Because by the time we waste time, we don't know what happens with this crystal. Time of the... We need, like, all the time we can. Because it, it's a giant crystal now. Yeah, that could be where the occult stragglers are at. Yeah, I wouldn't want to waste time if they pull something through. All right. Let's just go. <laughs> Diablo's reliable enough. Plus, I'm pretty sure he could hear anything that I was hearing and communicate it to Frenchie and them. All right. Well, well, we'll do it your way for now. Let's go. Okay. Lead the ways, then. All righty. <clears throat> Give me just a moment. The Xander is our compass, basically. Ah, uh, for the time being, yes. Best burb. He's a tiny burb, right? Yeah, he's a he's the size of a baby chocobo. Can you transform it to a giant chocobo? You don't want him to do that. <laughs> he could be bigger than the phoenix. Oh no, it, it, it's not that he'll be bigger than a phoenix. It's just that... Uh... Remember when he gave his explanations about... The, the the type of red chocobo that he is. Ah, uh, yeah. Burned yeah. world descender. Yeah. But not me. I'm being to fight. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a me problem. Yeah, it's gonna be a you problem when he burns the atmosphere, then you suffocate because there's no oxygen. Only cons to my armor. <laughs> All right, so, <clears throat> uh, you, Henry, sent a message through to Diablos, letting him know to bring or tell Drava to go to the western edge of the city, right? And to talk to whoever is there to let them know about the situation too. Okay. Because in response, he's going to say, Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Whatever. whatever. So, let's say about 15 minutes go by since your relaying of said message. And you all meet up at the western edge of the city. You all explain to Dreva what's going on. And, oh wait, I forgot to switch the map over. Let me, let me do this. And you all explain to Dreva what's going on. Uh, you let... You, you give a reminder for Diablo, says, Henry, you you just think that he probably wasn't paying you any real attention. And... How was that? It was... Uh -oh. Right. Wrong place. Right here. And oh, old Yashua's here. <laughs> yeah. I'll Destroyed. <laughs> What do I do with his token? 
I will put small Diablos right here. Oh, he's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> And now, before we continue, I oh, will be right back. Now, a word from our sponsor, Rage Shadow Legends. <laughs> Rage Wallet. <laughs> Rage Wallet. NordVPN. Do you know why I chose Barrier? Why is that? The bubble. The bubble? So you the could stack bubble? it on Shining Word? Yes, so we could double stack. <laughs> oh my god. You read what Bubble does, right? No, and what tier magic it is? It's tier one. Is it? It's a basic oh, dude. magic. Oh, dude, I'm gonna... I used it. Oh, dude, I'm gonna learn it instantly the next time you use it, because I wasn't paying attention when you used it. So what it does is it adds a barrier, double of the person's health, for a cost of 155 mana. Okay. So say so... I have 1,700 health, I get mm -hmm. 3,400 barrier on top of me. Uh, two times your HP, right? Let's see. Yeah, two, four, as six. a barrier. I'll have 7,025 HP with the barrier. I took it because it's useful, so I can rush up to people now. Because I'm going to get basically 3,400. Yeah, and I'm... If we throw a Shining Ward, we could both be close up. Yeah, we are going to turn into Vanguard Shields. Let's go. And then I could recast it into a, a illusion that when mine pops, I just get it recasted. I see what you're planning. Return okay. double, make another barrier protection <laughs> with an illusion. You can make your illusions be shields. Yep. You can make a, a shield wall. Yep. Or even set them at any time somebody's at low HP. Barrier them. I was thinking of this because I was watching an anime world trigger. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about barriers. I'm like, okay, how can I use barriers in these situations? <laughs> set them as the illusion, set them as a trap. And when somebody takes the bait, activate them. And they're in a bad situation after. Because they're close up in a trap situation. There's one thing I wanted to do with uh, Shining Ward, but like I can't find any spells in conjunction with it, or like figure out a way how to do it. Is where like I cast or or like any form of barrier, right? We could weaponize the barrier. Like say for example, we cast a barrier on someone, but we could shrink it down and crush them with the barrier. Maybe gravity. Rem uh, remember Mass Effect Andromeda? Remember the Ascendance? You know how they use the barrier to trap you, and then and then they shrink the barrier around you, and they crush you? I think you could do that now with the wind. You pull the air out of the thing and shrinking it. Uh, I don't think it's going to work like that, but I think a barrier, adding a barrier into an enemy and removing the oxygen will do something. <laughs> the reason I chose bubble is so I could bubble and then freeze the bubble. Though I have to ask if the bubble is is airtight. If it is, then we're, we're then we're golden. You know how I want my crystal ice mirrors. I have yeah. my crystal ice mirrors. Bubble, yeah. freeze, <laughs> smoke, crystal ice mirrors. Go. I mean, what happens if you? Okay, so <laughs> bubble's a barrier, right? But yeah. is it elemental? I'm pretty sure it should be water. If it's water, you could freeze it and turn it into a physical object. Riku with exactly is bubble okay because like you could just you know 
fly yourself in the air, cast bubble on yourself, freeze it, and just crash into something like a fucking wrecking ball, dude. Though, you're not entirely a solid block of ice, mind you. You're just gonna be like... It's gonna be a sheet of ice covering you, or covering you, uh, 360 degrees. Fire. Ice. Lightning. Earth. Wind. Water. Unless it's holy. Well, we don't know. We'll we'll, we'll ask Riku what it is. When he gets back. I'm thinking it's Aqua Bubble. That's what it was supposed to be. Well, we'll see. You just thought of something stupid. What did you think of? Uh, I don't know if Riku is recording when he's AFK. That's why I'm not going to mention it now. But I'll tell you later. Oh, I can't use it on people with diseases. What, bubble? Mm. Oh, dude. The, the, the next time we're able to go to, like, a magic store or whatever, we have to learn how to remove debuffs. That's the other skill. Because I have the... Uh, Isuna spell. To remove some, but not all. I need to learn that from you, the Suna spell. <laughs> I'm gonna ask Riku if you and me could trade spells right now. I mean, I could learn your spells just by you activating them. Yeah. As long as they're tier one and two. Yeah. But you learning them from me, I don't know. <laughs> that's the thing. When he gets back, I could ask if we could do a swap of spells quick. Okay, I am returned. Welcome back. Thank Welcome you. back. Question. Answer. Can me and Rick switch skills quickly? Like, do a trade of skills? As spells? I teach him bubble, he teaches me Asuna. Uh... So, for Asuna, um, you, you're gonna have to be like afflicted with a debuff or a status ailment for it to work. Because him just casting it normally, literally nothing's gonna happen. That if I burn myself, <laughs> I can't burn myself. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. <laughs> uh. Oh damn, that's funny. I have poison bullets. I could poison you. Shoot me in the leg. Go ahead. Shoot you in the leg with a poison bullet. Oh shit! You do have poison bullets. Okay, I mean, it'll work. I just can't burn myself. If you wanna <laughs> do it like that, feel free. That's some uh, pretty unique thinking outside the box. Okay. <laughs> Trust me, Chris and I. Chris and I, when we strategize these things, you'll be amazed at the things we come up with. Oh. Yashua I'm sure. And, Yashua and Henry are just huddled up and just... Okay. Yashua pulls out the kind of shoots Henry. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, okay, so... You see... Drava is like there, right? So... Mm -hmm. I want her to pay attention to see what we're doing, just for the shits and giggles. So, first off, Henry casts Bubble on himself. So, he's not killing himself here. <laughs> 
No, you're not gonna die. I'm not gonna shoot oh, no, you with poison no. three. I'm just gonna no, shoot no, you with my actual health won't get taken away, but I could still get poisoned, so so barrier. Does it barrier. work like that? Yeah. You could still get afflicted with things, it just gives you a barrier. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so bubble, myself, and Rick will see that and learn bubble. Okay. Uh Yashua. Uh, we'll use this icon for bubble. Oh, wait, no, 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 no. I have, an, I have an effect for this. I have an effect for this. Hold on. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Oh, and one other question. What element is bubble? It doesn't have one. So it's just non-elemental. Okay. Yeah, mo most green magic things don't have elements attached to them. Okay. Uh, okay. I thought it was water because yeah. uh, I was going to plant something hilarious with it. One question. Is bubble airtight? No. Strategizing things. That's why. That's, that's not the answer I wanted to hear. Cause like you, you, you say no with a question mark, meaning that you don't know. All right, cool. No, I'm, I'm, I'm saying like no, as in why would it need to be airtight? It's not like the Sonic Three bubble. Uh, we kind of want to put somebody inside a bubble and suck up things. <laughs> Yeah, I thought that we could use the the air spell to suck the air out of the bubble and suffocate someone in there. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, trust me, I'm being creative here. Uh, well, I hadn't intended for bubble to be used offensively. So let's say that... Okay. Take a whole turn to use like that? No, I was gonna say if you put Shining Word and Bubble on an enemy, I'll let it pass. Alright, good to know. <laughs> good to know. <laughs> I thought so that it would have to have the Shining Word on top of it. Yeah, because I also have an idea where I. He's gonna love this. <laughs> um, Riku, so you know, um, uh, Bullet Dan's explosive shot? Oh, Christ. Yeah. Cast bubble. <laughs> uh, shoot someone with that, cast bubble, shining ward, and mm, all that energy contained in a single bubble. So you want to make like a, like a kinetic bomb or something? Oh, it's gonna be a it, it's gonna be a kinetic bomb, but it's gonna be a very controlled explosion. Everything inside the bubble, though. Uh, feel bad for whoever gets stuck in there. God damn. Okay, back to our. All right, so thing. you I cast, cast bubble, there. right? Yeah, bubble. All right. Uh, I need you to cast it. Like, do you have it equipped on your sheet? Yep. There you go. Dude, you poor bastard. <laughs> what, the one? Okay. Oh no, it's always a one. I set it to that way. Yeah. Okay, what's... It's just a preset ability. You can't roll for that. Okay, I'm just gonna use, uh... Here, I'll just shoot you with... God, I don't know what to shoot you with. All of these do high damage. Doesn't matter. I have 3k health. Okay. I'll just shoot you once with this. That barely did a scratch. And you shot he that at him. armor piercer. It went right through the barrier. <laughs> so it's armor piercing with poison one bullet. Well, there goes my bubbles. There's no use to it. <laughs> right in my leg. Okay. 
Henry's rolling on the floor, not prepared for this shot since he used armor piercer. <laughs> Diablos is laugh laughing at you writhing on the ground. And Drava has a what the fuck was that for expression on her face. Okay. I literally grab where I grab uh, Henry's leg where the bullet wound is. But like uh -huh. I grab it hard. So like he stops moving. <laughs> causing more pain. Harry's just look at you like I'll get you back for this. <laughs> <laughs> While this is happening, Xander is keeping himself afloat with one of his wings, and he is using his other one to, well, since he doesn't have hands, feather palm. Feather palm. Feather palm. So, I grab your leg where, where, where the bullet wound is, and I smack you, so the pain in your leg... You get distracted with the pain in your face, so you could, you know, pay attention. I'm only gonna do this once. <laughs> I was like, pay attention really well. I'm only gonna do this once, because I'm sure you don't want to get shot multiple times. Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Where is it? Okay, let me grab the effect for that. When you cast the essence spell on Henry, you shot him in the leg, right? Yeah, I'm on, just removing the poison. On his leg. A little specter of light swirls around the afflicted body part, and the poison is removed. Okay. You get all that. Henry's just looking at you like, I fucking hate you. <laughs> make things sim to make things really simple, just imagine... How antibodies function against viruses. It's simple as that. Henry walks over, <laughs> holding his leg still to Yashua and puts a, fire, <laughs> a nice Ember spell right on his finger and puts it right on Joshua's head. Now, hold on. Before you do that, I was going to cast Cure. On you. No, fuck you. I'm burning your fucking head and healing it. It's funny. That... <laughs> so now he's burning and I'll heal it back with this. <laughs> That's. <laughs> You're gonna try to burn my hair. No, your forehead. Oh, your okay. Hair. Damn. Uh. Scorching his little head. Uh, there I'm afraid. I'll heal it. I'm afraid I. I'm afraid I can't let you do that. You could burn me anywhere else, but not the head. Uh, fine, your arm. <laughs> it's like a blowtorch. <laughs> okay, so just shoot a fireball at me or something. It is. Yeah, a shoot a fireball ember. at me. It's a giant ember. <laughs> As all this is taking place, uh, Diablos will very loudly <laughs> clear his throat. <coughs> <coughs> You, you done, done yet? yet? Henry just glares at Diablo. Not now. <laughs> oh, 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 look who has some balls. No, no, just be a little patient. We're teaching, we're teaching each other spells. By attacking each other. This is how people have fun. You'll not understand. 
Oh, you I have fucking flicking, say. not receiving. Yeah, yeah whatever. whatever. Don't care anymore. So I learned bubble. How do I implement that, Riku? Uh, on your. On your spell card section of your character sheet, where Cure and Essena are, mm -hmm. uh, punch it in uh, the same way. So, like how it has Essena, which has the name, the casting time, the range, the target components, and the description. Mm -hmm. Do bubble action range. Target anything description cast a bubble around the target for equal that's nice but equal equal to double their current H HP cost Doesn't he learn it, at half power, though? Well, it's bubble. It doesn't... Yeah, it's not necessarily an attack. And there's no additional, like, stats added to it. So it would just... Be the same way. Now, if it was an attack... It differently huh? you guys, then. Oh, well, that's just how it would look on a spell card. I'll show him how to do it for his, uh other side later Bell card. I wish I knew how to do that oh I can show you did too it's super easy uh, okay I enjoy my butts and presses more okay <laughs> there we go glad you learned how to use Ensana okay. Henry's all huffed up and arms crossed like didn't have to do it that way. You told me to shoot you. Not with the armor piercing round. If it wasn't armor piercing, how were you gonna get poisoned? That's why there was a bubble. <laughs> so it wouldn't hurt. It would've hurt less if you just took a normal round. Dreva speaks up and says, I'm not all too privy about whatever the fuck is going on here, but we're kind of like burning daylight and this uh, sudden mission. Should we just go ahead and get it done? Let's go. All right. All right. Let's move. So, no. Xander takes to the air and he begins heading off and being your navigator i'm assuming you all have activated your flight gear yes yep all right can i request something maybe can i request my flight gear to be imbued with diablo's powers so i can have like demon wings sure that's pretty cool yes <laughs> <laughs> I could just fly with like demon wings. <laughs> Henry whispers to Diablo the, the idea, and he agrees. Huh? Uh, flashy. She says, <sighs> "Yeah, yeah sure. Scare some people. people. Fuck, fuck with him a little, little bit." bit. Yeah. Oh, Henry on his back when he activates it grows. Diablo wings. <laughs> okay, okay, you didn't, didn't say you were just gonna, gonna straight up copy my wings, wings but yeah, <sighs> whatever, whatever, don't, don't care. care. I, I figured you would have some kind of originality, but eh, I'm, I'm not the one flying. flying. 
Henry looks at Diablo, but I want the cool ones like you. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. Unless you want me to have your brother's wings. I'll, I'll kill, kill you. you. <laughs> I said flies. <laughs> Anyways. I activate my flight unit, but... Instead of just having your regular flying effects, the proto material just changes it. Two. It's nothing flashy like wings or anything, but you see like particles coming out of it. Instead of just, you know, traditional thrusters, there's just particles coming out of it instead. Okay. It would that be works. cool if Trafa had dragon wings. <laughs> Everybody has personal wings. Let's say that for Drava, when she activates her flight unit, um, you remember what Dragonite's wings look like from Pokemon? Yeah, they're little wings like that attached to the sides of the boots. Or, er, the, oh, the gear. Cool. Oh, that's cutesy. Freaking uh, uh, Icarus wings. Alright. So, you all take the disguise, and you follow the standard direction. And I'm assuming that since you're all falling behind him, you are flying at regular flight speed, yes? Yeah. I... So we'll say about about four hours go by and y'all land on uh, a trail leading up to where you all need to be headed towards. So I'm gonna I'm gonna move this. And then I will also change the song. Since you all are moving along and on a quest. Let's see, I'm gonna play this. Nope, wrong one. That was too peaceful for this. Yeah, too, way too peaceful. <laughs> uh, let me see. I know I got something here. Yeah, we'll use this one. I like this one. Okay. Uh, so you'll enter in from the right side of the map. And Xander lands a little bit of ways ahead of you as he is stopping again to uh, sense out uh, just how close you are to the crystal and let's say that when you want to land you do notice you notice a bunch of footsteps seemingly going in all random directions if you wish to determine which set of footprints are the right ones to follow, you can roll investigation. Then. Ooh, nice roll. Okay. Okay. After careful examination, you find that the footprints heading towards the northeast are the correct ones to follow. 
as you walk by Xander, who is still sensing out where the Ignis Crystal Mass is. And you make your way over to what used to be a makeshift campsite, so to say. It looks pretty worn, though. I want to, like, pull my hand hand near the fireplace to see if it's still warm or cold. The fire is very cold. Hmm. Whoever was here, they're long gone now. Yeah, that... That looks like to the, uh, the current situation, because these tracks are kind of old looking. Whatever this really bad campsite was, it's, uh, it's worn and torn and all that time stuff and whatever. Uh, I'm not really seeing anything we can use to track them down, though. Hmm. Henry thinks to himself, if only I could summon a hellhound. <laughs> and Dre was going to say, you know, for a guy that just learned to lose in magic, you are really looking to just conjure up some wild stuff, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, yeah, once... Once he learns something, he just keeps on going. Henry, Henry's thinking to himself, if only I had the spell detect <laughs> with my, my illusions, this would be a lot easier. Yeah, you've uh, got a fair point with that one. Hmm. Anyways. Should we check the other tracks? Yeah, we should. Mm. Please roll investigation again. Wait, why are we just trying to follow these tracks? Can't just Xander just we just follow Xander? <laughs> He's still working on figuring out which way is the right way. Uh, investigation. Right. Okay. With these investigation rules, you'll notice that the footprints heading towards the northeast seem to all blend into one centralized track. As you notice that there is a pretty beat up looking bag uh, right up under a tree, and that's where they seemingly stop. Let's see what's inside the bag. Or maybe the bag is covering a entrance or something. Roll investigation? Nah. Uh, you check out the bag. And you can see traces of an orange dusting lining around the bottom of the bag. You find a few scraps of paper with uh, illegible scribblings all over them. And you find a piece of a tooth in there. None of that Ooh. stuff looks like it's of any value, but if you want to hold on to it, you can. 
Henry. Take these pieces of paper, since you always seem to always pick these up all the time and learn something out of them. Can I examine them? Mmm, can. Yeah. Would I have to use insight? Yeah. Alright. You examined the piece of paper with illegible writing. And while you can't read the text lettering, you do notice that there are a lot of arrows written all over it. And when you <clears throat> when you notice that, you cross reference the other pieces of paper and they are all pointing to the same direction. And then, as you do that, Xander gets a whiff of that orange dusting from inside the bag as there were traces of it on the paper. And he lets out a small chirp, signifying that he has finished uh, sensing the area and he turns to you and he says oh what's that pointing at the uh, paper with arrows in your hand and holds it in front of Xander's face do you understand this not a chance in hell but assuming those arrows are pointing in the same direction where I just finished sensing that's where we need to go. What kind of tooth is this anyways? Monster tooth? That appears to be... A very weird combination of a human and monster, monster tooth. Oh, cool. Hopefully it's a werewolf. I just flick it to the side. Henry grabs it before it, it lands. I'm gonna hold on to this. Alright. Now is there anything else in here? I, I'm just like shaking the bag. Mm, nothing else of note or value come out of the bag when you shake it. Okay, I just tossed the bag aside. Okay. Actually, I'm gonna hold on to the bag in case I have to bag someone's head. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna add it to my inventory. A bag. <laughs> uh, what is this? A leather bag? Cloth bag? Yeah, let's go with a cloth bag. Yeah, it's a cloth bag. All right, there we go. Now, which way were we heading, Xander? We are going straight ahead. As Xander takes to the air again, he looks to you all in a almost excited way as he gets to flying in the direction of being your navigator once again. Okay. We follow in the air. Alright. And before long, a few more hours later, you all come to the you all you all approach a mountain and you fly just above it so where you're looking down into the mountain. And the sight that you see, before you see anything else, is a giant Ignis crystal just floating in the center. Looks and like then, we found the jackpot. And then, looking at the things around the Ignis crystal, you see what remains of the cult and some form of 
fire-based elemental that they decided to conjure up from somewhere unknown. We're spawning from up here? Uh... Yeah. Do that wrong. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Alright. And then there's says, Oh, there's. Well, there's my target. And that looks like it's gonna keep me full for a couple of weeks. But, um, those are the. Eh, it looks like the last of the cult from what Zeril and I found. However you want to handle it, it's up to you guys. I'm going to work on dinner. Alright. Henry puts his hand on Drava and Yashua's back and casts Bubble on both of them. Okay. Uh, what do I do with that? Eh. I'll use this one for Bubble. This is a clearer color, like a clearer color. Does the bubble trouble with me when I move my token around? No, unfortunately. It's okay. In that case, you don't have to put a bubble on me. Just put like a little icon on me. Yeah. Uh, let me do that. Move that there. And I'll cast that on myself too. Bubble and bubble. Just and bubble. Alright, Connor using, so I know for the future. I can give myself a start. Okay. Alright, so I'm gonna make things uh a little simple here. Since uh since I have a little bubble on me, right? Mm-hmm. And it doubles my HP. Uh-huh. Okay, let me do something here. I'm gonna create a little mechanic here. I think I deleted one of my spells. That's a problem. Hmm. Yeah. Because Essena went to a spot that I wasn't supposed to. And I don't remember was in that spot prior. Uh oh. Yeah. It was right after Dark Smoke. I don't remember what was there either. Well, that's no good. Um... I'll I'll give you a replacement spell later. Is it Blizzara? I think it was the ice spell, Blizzara. Did you have Blizzara? Have yeah, cause uh, remember uh, Drava taught me it during the fight with uh, Ifrida. Did she teach you Bizarre? Yeah, that was right after then I got Fire Gorge from my armor. That's what I'm missing in the slots. <laughs> if she taught you Blizzara, then your regular Blizzard spell should be in a different spot. And even on top of that, uh, through leveling up, you would have gotten Blizzara normally as a passive upgrade. I haven't upgraded. I saw Blizzard there. From the beginning of the game. There's my barrier. See it? Yeah, I see it. 
Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. If I have barrier on, it's going to look like this. Or bubble. Okay. Shining Ward, you already know it's a, it's, it's a red bubble. But if I have two, but if I have both of them on at the same time, it's going to be a purple shield. Okay. Because, you know, red and blue makes purple. Make things easier for everyone. Was it? I swear it was bizarre. What else what could it have been? I have slow. It's still there. Grab no, it wasn't. It wasn't that. Was it Mano Shell? I don't think I had Mano Shell. You should, because you got that at level 9. No, it had to be something that came out after the... Was it Mano Shell? Maybe it was. It's, it's either got to be that, or, um, did you ever put concentration on here? Concentration on here. At all. I have mana charge there, but not concentration. Okay, yeah, you got two mana charges on your spell list. I do. took a picture. All right, we'll we'll, yeah, we'll don't worry about figure it, it out later. So, if you all have your targets, you have your sights. Uh, they have not noticed you yet. And mind you, you all are still airborne. And before before battle commences, since you've been flying for about about four hours and some change, uh, remove. 500 MP off yourself. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. something I wanted to ask What's up? about Bubble and Shining Ward since yeah. I'll be using those two together from now on if I activate Bubble right and it doubles my HP mm -hmm. and I activate Shining Ward on top is Shining Ward gonna be based off my basic HP or also the bonus HP basic HP okay Are these enemies all the same from each other? Yep. 
Okay, in that case, I'm just going to cast... I'm going to use Libra on everyone. Because even though these are the same enemies, I just want... I'll, just want to have their health bars displayed. And this guy too. Okay. So yeah, my whole turn is just gonna be uh revealing the enemies. It's health bars and weaknesses and such. Alright. Can I still do a critical lead pro on the big guy? Uh yeah. But yeah, my, my, my whole turn is casting Libra on everyone and the big guy. I'll do the critical Libra on the big guy, don't worry. Yeah, because if you spend your whole turn, that'll be all five of your actions. And there are, I get look, there are six enemies present. Well, I'm only casting Libra on one, the big guy, this guy, this guy this guy and this guy because fuck this guy in particular <laughs> <laughs> okay we're taking him hostage <laughs> right Rick? Uh, no I'm no I'm gonna completely wipe out the cult no oh, prisoners no, we, today we need to take one prisoner just no to prisoners just today the others As Zero mentioned, these are all the cultists. Can we befriend the demon? That's an elemental, not a demon. Same thing. No, it's not. Can I befriend him? <laughs> no. Damn it, I can't have a little fire wisp following me around. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm friends with the elemental golems. Yeah, but that's your personal golem that yeah. you made. <laughs> Frickin' Henry here should create his uh, TV show called The Demon Whisper. Hey, I'm trying to make my own cult. <laughs> called the Screw Chaos Cult. After a while, you don't want to hear people say, yeah. <laughs> nah, don't worry. Uh, there, There's plenty of chaos coming from Stranger's Paradise. I can't wait for that game. I could wait. That game's going to be fun. Years. Alright, since you're fire proof, you can hug oh. this guy and exactly. not get burned. You finally thought it. <laughs> Why do you think I want to befriend him? <laughs> He's gonna be my son, don't worry. He's gonna be my son. Damn. This, this is what I'm gonna do. Henry is gonna try to befriend it, and before the creature becomes buddy with Henry, Yasha is just gonna kill it. <laughs> oh, no. Weak to light, you say?
Okay, here you go. So Yasha spent his whole turn analyzing things. Uh, Henry used one action on the flame elemental. Good. So whose turn is it? Mine? It's yeah, it's your yours. turn, yes. I'm faster than Drava? No, this is pre battle. Oh. Yeah, they Are don't know you're just... there yet. Okay. Well I'll just do so, did you do the critical already on the big guy? Yep. Okay. That one, let me put this down. So that. So, that's three so far, so I have one more. Did that. Hmm. I'm going to do mana charge, because I'm kind of low. You hit the button, and then <clears throat> so you would regain 70% of whatever your maximum MP is. <laughs> okay, I'm back to full. <laughs> I'm back to full MP. 1,765. Do I gain limit break energy for casting bubble or no? Nope. No. Just wondering. And that's it. That's my five moves pre-battle. Alright. Drava is going to <clears throat> take her staff off her back. And she is going to... Hmm. She is going to... Open the battle... By... Flying directly above... <gasps> Excuse me. Flying directly above... Your adversaries... And let loose a bunch of ruin spells. And she looks over to you guys. She looks back down at the enemies and she says, Heads up! All right. <clears throat> Okay. I love this soundtrack so much. So that's one, two, three, and four. Because she used action to fly up. So she is. She's in the air. But she is directly above the Ignis crystal mass. And for clarity's sake, we'll say she's about, about 30 feet in the air. 
So let me do 30. Five, six, three. This one. Oh, and as the enemies are struck by the sudden ruin spells, you will hear various different forms of "fuck." They found us. Did you really think you would escape? <laughs> and in response, they won't necessarily say anything verbally, but they will retaliate with their own <clears throat> Ruin spells being slung at. They're all going to fire one. So, Jib is going to have two thrown her way. Yashiro, you're going to get uh, one thrown your way. And then, Henry, you have two thrown your way. So, let me roll this out. That's just a base roll for all of them. Or the damage roll for all of them. Okay. Like, wait, what was the thing again? One D seven, one D seven. Okay. Go. Okay, Drave is taking 111 points of damage from that. And as the spells are being flung around, uh, you can see Xander off in the distance making a Beeline towards the Ignis Crystal. As the uh, elemental being notices the small creature making a dart towards the crystal, and he will try to stop Xander via swatting at him, to which he continually fails. <laughs> Okay. okay, sorry, I was uh, adding a spell I forgot to add. How much damage am I taking here? So the damage roll for the Ruin spell coming your way mm -hmm. is 358. That's the roll for all of them. So, uh, pit this against your defense. AC was 9%, right? Because this thing keeps changing on me. Yep. 
So I have a question for the repository counter. What does it counter exactly? Everything, including spells. Uh... For a battle mage. Well, post says yeah. you take a counter step, you counter attack stance, and when you get hit, you fling half of it back at the enemy. So it just says upon taking damage, but you have to use that prior to getting hit. Are these actually hitting me? Because I'm a lot faster than they are. Mm. What's your speed stat? Huh? So what's your speed stat? I'm... 255. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it's hitting you. It, so, it, it won the accuracy roll by one point. Okay, so subtract 358 out of my defense and my AC, right? Uh-huh. Uh, if my defense is higher than that. I don't think I'm taking damage here, Chief. <laughs> if your defense is yeah. higher, you don't take damage. Yeah, I'm, I'm not taking damage from that. I'm just looking at it like... This is all the cult have? Yeah, this is this is like this is the last five. All the rest of them have been arrested or dead. Damn. I just I just, you know dust off my shoulder. You dust off the bubble. <laughs> Not I just like <laughs> I just like polish the bubble. <laughs> there you go. You got dust on my bubble, jeez. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Before we say that, since I have since we have the bubble on us, it's just damaging the bubble. So we don't have to do I don't damage. Think it, damage I right? think it doubles our health. It doesn't hit like a barrier. Yeah, it just doubles your health. Not like a shield or anything. You just have oh, more okay, health okay, than okay. normal. Yeah. But Okay, so in that case, I just dust off the fucking... Think of it as like a film on yourself. Yeah. Okay, I gotcha. So, yeah. So, I'm next again. Mm, well, this is it's... now battle phase. Oh, yeah. But the Ashwan, right? Mm hmm. Because Trayva just went steep. Oh, I don't mind it at all. That is, actually, I want right here. That is, uh, action one. Now, what should I do with you? Actually, I'm not going to use my guns for this. Nothing. Two. Three. Four. So, like, imagine my hands just arcing with electricity and I'm just beating this guy down to the ground. Jeez. Oh,
Alright, let me add all that up real quick. By the way, that ruin spell, what tier was it? One. Okay. Alright, this Bozar right here took another 878 worth of damage. Uh, it's 10% of uh, damage they take, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Drava's turn. Okay. She is going to spend her next turn using. Hmm. Oh, I just read what that just says. Melee strikes, pummel the enemy, and the enemy speed goes down by five. Hmm. Poor guy is slow as fuck now. She is going to throw... One Blizzara spell. And then... She's going to use... The rest of her turn using Eroga on the big fire guy. Two, three, four. Now before I calculate the damage, because he kept getting smacked by wind spells, he's going to be moving this is my measuring tool. He's going to be knocked off the ground and up onto a cliff. Opening the way for Xander to finally make contact with the Ignis Crystal Mass. This guy happens to be weak to wind magic too. This is good. Okay, the big fire elemental is taking 2,366 damage. And as Xander begins happily munching away at the Ignis Mass, you see a fire begin to violently burst from the center of the crystal itself as Xander takes more and more bites out of it and you begin to see him very slowly grow in size oh, and at the sight of that you also feel that the flames coming from the Ignis Mask are being absorbed into him and are more or less pulsing out of him at a very fast rate almost like almost like an accelerated heartbeat and as the flames reach their peak session will end for today
you have Ready, then. 15 seconds for your fake sponsorships. Go. Buy a Ridge Wallet. This is not sponsored. <laughs> yeah. If Yet. you don't, I will. If you don't, I will find you, and I will take your cereal boxes. And cereal number. <laughs> and that's it.